In this tabletop review, I'm going to be looking at a tactical vest made by Blackhawk. This is the Omega Elite. Uh, it has a retail price of $183.95 on Blackhawk's website. You can probably find this vest for, I don't know, $100 to $130 new, depending upon where you uh, search. This one I'm reviewing, I did not buy new. I bought this off of eBay. I think I paid uh, about $22 for it. So uh, for me, this, this was a, a good buy. Um, I'm going to read some of the uh, specs off of this particular vest. And then I'm going to discuss some, some specifics about this vest. And I'm going to discuss... the. There are several different versions of this vest as well. So I'll discuss that as well. Blackhawk calls this their tactical or their Omega Elite tactical vest number one. I'm not sure why the number one is on there. It has seven, um, excuse me, it has sewn in pouches on the front and strike webbing on the back. So it will handle um, 12 M16 magazines. So it has six pouches and each pouch will hold two magazines. Now with that said, I have two uh, uh, 30 round Magpul Gen 3 P mags right here. Um, so they, they fit, no problem. All right. Um, the vest itself is adjustable for length and girth. Blackhawk says it's adjustable up to 6 inches in length and 32 inches in girth. I'll talk about that a little later um, because the adjustments are a little bit tricky. The zippers on this vest are YKK heavy duty zippers. It has um, side release buckles for rapid donning and doffing. doffing. Um, I'm assuming they're referring to these particular buckles right here. Uh, I'll talk about these as well a little later. Belt loops to secure the vest to a web belt. Um, that is down here. These are also um, adjustable. They've got uh, Velcro on them. So depending upon how wide of a tactical belt you're using, you can adjust this uh, via the Velcro so it fits your particular belt. The snaps are also very heavy duty and solid. So you can see how that works right there. Uh, good design um, for your, your tactical belt. There's a reinforced drag handle. Um, strike webbing on the back for attaching the pouches. I'll talk about that later. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what type of nylon material this is made out of, but it's heavy duty. Uh, it is lined with mesh for maximum breathability. Both shoulders are padded non-slip shoulders, uh, so that makes this an ambidextrous vest. Um, that makes this one a little bit different than the previous generation. There are two large internal zippered accessory pockets on both front panels. They are eight and a half uh, high by 10 inches wide. The mag pouches have adjustable flaps. I'll talk about that or I'll show you that a little later. There are two horizontal accessory pouches. Of course, the six magazine uh, pouches. Uh, this vest comes with a removable shot shell strip, hook and loop strip for an ID patch. Uh, this is considered the newest design because it has strips for girth adjustment versus the old design which has strings or a girdle. I mean, some people call it a girdle adjustment. This particular vest has shoulder adjustment straps that are inside the vest. Um, I'll talk about that as well, a little bit more in detail. Um, uh, for reference, uh, I've got this adjusted to fit me. I'm 5'7", 155 pounds. Uh, this will adjust much larger 
but it's not going to go much smaller than how I have it set. Um, okay, um, that's pretty much all the, the initial talking points I had off of Blackhawk's site. Now, going back to the version of these vests. The first generation of this vest, from what I can gather, I may not be 100% on this, the first generation had only a single padded shoulder. Up here was a small radio pouch. The adjustment straps on the side here for girth were strings, and it kind of looked like a girdle the way the strings were weaved in here. So these have actual straps on them. The first generation also had a different type of molly. You can see down here, this is straight up molly. You've got the one inch molly all the way down. There's a small gap right here and a small gap right here. So uh, this newer design has a better molly setup. This newer design also has a more reinforced grab handle. Previous generation, the grab handle was not quite as reinforced as this. You can see this is a piece of material that's folded over, it's double stitched, it's X stitched here, and then there's even molly going over the top of the grab handle stitching. The previous generation um, to adjust for the height, the previous generation had um, shoulder straps that came over and there was Velcro and it attached to the Velcro and that left a part of the Velcro, depending upon how you adjusted it, part of the Velcro exposed. Um, this particular one, you can see um, there's this, and you can see the shoulder actually goes inside, and the rest of this material is on the inside here. Now, what uh, I'm, I believe is this is a second gen vest because of this design with this. Uh, um, this actually is a rapid release right here, this little Velcro piece. If you pull on this really hard, you're going to pull this whole shoulder piece out. So it's a quick release tab. You grab this and you yank on it. Uh, you got to yank on it pretty hard because there's a lot of Velcro on the inside here. But I did test this and if you pull on this hard enough, you'll pull this whole thing apart. So this is like a quick release tab. And I believe this has been done away with on the newest generation of this vest. So why do I think that uh, this is an, uh, not the newest generation? Uh, this is a picture from Blackhawk's website of the uh, Omega Elite vest. And you'll notice the, the webbing on the back is pretty much the same here in the grab handle. But um, what you're going to see that's a little bit different here are up here on the shoulder. I'm not exactly sure how this new vest works. but. Uh, there are buckles here, so I'm assuming these buckles allow you to adjust for the height of the vest, um, which is great because this design, um, I, I hate to use the word sucks, but this design sucks. This was a pain in the ass to adjust, and I'll explain to you why. To adjust this, of course, you have to undo this. There's Velcro here. You have to undo this. Now, this piece, it goes all the way inside here. It comes all the way down to about right here. You have to undo this. This is Velcro right here. You have to reach your hand up in here and pull this strap off. Of course, you probably can't, you probably can't see this too well, but if you look down in here, you can see where these pant these pieces are. There's Velcro in here, and these pieces uh, are attached to the Velcro. You have to peel this up, peel this down, and you have to try and pull this out. And you have to get all of the Velcro pulled apart to move this shoulder adjustment. It is not easy. It is uh, very difficult. I had my hand jammed up in here, pulling down trying to separate the Velcro pieces while I could adjust this. And in my case, I was trying to make this smaller, so I was trying to push this piece in. Um, this D-loop right here, there's actually another one right here. So um, there's actually two D-loops on the shoulder. Uh, and, and I have this is, is 
pushed in as far as I can push it in without losing this D loop because I want I, I, I want to keep those. Um, so right off the bat, this is a pain in the butt to adjust. I would demonstrate this quick release, but I'm not going to go through trying to get this set up again. It's just it's it's too difficult. Um, not a good design, um, not at all. So it would appear that the newest vest of this genre has an improved adjustability for the shoulders. So I know I'm kind of doing a review on an older series vest here, um, so I apologize for that. Um, I wasn't completely knowledgeable about the different versions of the vest uh, when I made this purchase. Um, again, uh, I purchased this for like $22. Um, it is, it is a, a pre-owned vest. It's in good condition. It's just a little dusty. Um, so let's talk about where you, why you would use a vest like this. Well, this vest is, is, does not have armor capability. You might be able to retrofit something because of, there's, some, there's some pockets here, but you would never have full armor protection with a vest like this. With the adjustability of this vest, you could wear it uh, over um, a, a plate carrier. So if you had a concealed plate carrier that had soft armor and plates, you can adjust this and wear it over the top. So I know a lot of, uh, a lot of people uh, wear it that way. For me, I bought this for uh, training events where uh, I'm outside and I, I don't want a lot of weight uh, while I'm doing a, 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 a training event. So if, if I travel somewhere for a couple of days and I'm doing a run and gun outside, uh, it, previously I would use my plate carrier my, with my soft armor and my plates and then all my magazines and my IFAC and everything else. And after a while, um, that becomes very uncomfortable. And it's also hot, so if it's 70, 80 degrees outside, it's pretty uncomfortable. This, for me, is an alternative to using my plate carrier when I'm doing a training event. Uh, because of the mesh design, the lightweight design of this, I can quickly put this on and I can go and do an event. I have magazines here and I have some accessory pockets for other things. Uh, and it has uh, the facilities for a tactical belt. So for my secondary uh, that I wear on a, on a drop leg holster, uh, it works out great. So this was the logic in my purchase. Is it worth the $184 retail? Maybe to some people. Is it worth $120, $130 if, if you search for it? Probably. Um, this is a high quality vest made by Blackhawk. Um, the Blackhawk and the 511 vests, from what I've seen, are extremely high quality. The buckles, the zippers, the, 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 the material used, the Velcro, uh, the snaps, uh, very high quality. Um, I have not been disappointed with the Blackhawk or the 511 products. Uh, I haven't used everything, I haven't seen everything, but out of the two products lines that I've seen, the 511 and the Blackhawk, I've been very happy with both of them. So they didn't cheap out, as far as I can tell, anywhere. Now, with this type of design, obviously these magazine pouches are sewn in here. So you've got basically six M4 pouches on the front. You have these two breast pockets right here. And that's it. You're not going to really put anything else on the front. Now, if you want to carry um, some other pouches, an IFAC or a radio pouch, you know, there, this molly back here is real accommodating for that. Uh, I don't think you need to eat up this space with a water bladder because you can put a water bladder on the inside of the vest. So uh, conserve your molly space for other accessories that you might need carry your water bladder inside. And we'll talk about that um, a little later in the video as well, because I do have a water bladder I'll put in here. Um, the, the straps, again, like I mentioned, the previous generation had strings. These are um, strap adjustments. There is a um, elastic um, uh, strap organizer here on each one of these. You can see I've got this cinched down pretty, pretty small. It can go a little bit smaller, but that's that's cinched down pretty far. Um, so we've got good strap management with these little um, elastic deals. 
Uh, I think it's a good design. Some people have mentioned that these straps have a tendency to come loose. I haven't really used this vest that much, so I can't comment on that uh, at, at, at this point. Um, I like the, the, the gratuitous amount of molly on the back of this. I love the reinforced drag handle. Um, having both of these shoulders padded makes this an ambidextrous vest. Or if you're strictly a right-handed shooter, if you're, you're doing transitions, if you're taking a training class, you're doing transitions, you can transition from right to left, left to right. Um, whereas with the old generation with the radio pouch here, uh, that could possibly get in the way if you were doing transitions or if you were um, uh, possibly a left-handed shooter. Um, I don't recall if, if Blackhawk made right-handed and left-handed specific vests like this where the radio pouch was moved from here to here. Um, uh, moving on, um, I talked about these buckles right here. I find these buckles annoying and redundant, and if I keep this vest, I'm going to cut these off. What would be really nice is if these buckles were removable, because um, I, I hate to make a permanent modification like cutting something, but these are basically in the way. Um, when I get this zipped up, these just flop around, uh, and they're in the way, and they jab on things. Um, I just don't know what to do with these. Um, having these removable or having a place to tuck them out of the way, you know, like if there was a little pocket right there where you could just tuck this in, that would be great. Um, I'm sure there's a, a logic behind having this redundant buckle here, but for me, with the zipper, I mean, you have a YKK zipper, and these are really solid zippers, uh, and they're not going to let you down. So I think the buckles are you know, more of an annoyance than anything else, but that's just my opinion. Uh, these two accessory pouches, um, you can see the this accessory pouch has Velcro on the inside, and this is the shotgun. This is the, the shotgun shell holder right here. So you can leave this on the inside here, where the Velcro is, or you can take it out, and you can stick it over here and run it like that. So you have some flexibilities with the shot, shotgun shell holder on where you want to put it, or if you want to just take it out and leave it out. Uh, all of these pockets all have drain holes in them. The Velcro is solid. See this pocket right here is a little bit deeper. I think it's a little bit deeper. It appears to be a little bit deeper. It's got a different Velcro design on it. There's no Velcro on the inside um, because they put the Velcro on the outside. So you could put a name tape right there. Um, the mag pouches. These are adjustable, and to adjust these, you basically have to get in here and force the Velcro apart, and then you can completely remove this strap, or you can you can um, you know uh, adjust it up and down. Uh, if you're using smaller magazines, if you're using 20 round magazines, you could make this smaller. Uh, you might want to make it taller if you had um, magazine extensions on the bottom. There's also um, this right here. So if you weren't using all of these mag pouches, you could slip other items in here and they wouldn't flop around as much. So good, good design with these pouches. Um, uh, so they are very flexible. I did try AK magazines in here, the 30 round uh, AKs. I was only able to get one in here. I wasn't able to get two magazines, AK magazines in here. So um, because of the shape of the magazines, it's kind of awkward, but it is doable. So you could carry six AK magazines if you wanted to with uh, this particular style of vest. Um, these padded shoulders up here are really nicely padded. Um, they're, they're comfortable, especially if you've got a shoulder uh, stock on here. You've got, like I mentioned, D-rings on both sides. There's actually two D-rings. Uh, one of them's hidden inside of here, the way I have this adjusted. So uh, if you were really big and you pulled this down, you'd end up with two D-rings visible. So right now there's only one visible. Uh, the, they're metal D-rings, they're not plastic. So with the metal D-ring, you can, for example, I, I like to run a uh, one-point sling. So this is a Blackhawk Strikes uh, sling. I've done a review on this uh, as well. You can easily 
clip this on the D-ring and boom, you're good to go with a one-point sling uh, if uh, that's something you're interested in. Um, I, I use these particular slings. I have these on my tactical packs. I have them on my vests. Uh, so, um, you know, they're, they're real convenient for me. So lots of flexibility there. On the inside of the vest, not so much flexibility on the inside of the vest. Uh, the YKK zipper is solid. Uh, you can see the whole, more or less the whole inside of this is all mesh lined, uh, which makes this uh, fairly cool to wear. Um, on each side here is a, a, a zipper pull and another YKK zipper for this pocket. So this is a pretty deep pocket. Um, you can put cell phones in here, uh, maps, documents, other things like that. And there's, there's, there's one on each side. Now up at the top here is another pocket. You can see where my hand is. This goes all the way down to the bottom. I do not believe this is where your water bladder is supposed to go. Um, this could be used, you could put a, I, I'm assuming you could put an actual plate back here or some soft armor if that's what you wanted. Um, it would just slip down in here. This is not Velcroed or zippered. Um, also, you can see right back here, this is a hole that goes into the back compartment for your water tube. And then you've got uh, some Velcro right here to, I believe, um, well, it's either to, to maybe hold your uh, tubing from your water bladder. Uh, or, you know, maybe it's designed to hold your actual water bladder right in this compartment. Um, if that were the case, then I don't know what that's for. Well, I guess you could do this two ways. I'm not exactly sure where it's optimum to put the water bladder. I guess you could put the water bladder here, use these to hold the water bladder in place, route your tubing up through here, and maybe up under here or something. I'm not sure. Uh, I will play around with that a little bit on camera and, and see what I can come up with for, for water, water bladder placement um, and, and show you what the water bladder looks like when it's installed. Um, so I've covered all the talking points on this particular one. Um, I don't have any other talking points. Um, I am, I am happy with um, this vest. Uh, I like the design layout. I like the fact I can carry a lot of magazines here and I've got a couple of extra uh, compartments here. And then of course the Molly on the back. So I like the layout um, of this. I just don't, uh, again I'll mention it one more time, I don't like the way you, ha the, you have to struggle to, to adjust this for height. But I figure once you get it adjusted for height, you won't really have to adjust it again, um, I would think. If you were wearing this without uh, an, uh, a plate carrier underneath it, you, can, you would uh, cinch down the girth here. Then if you decided to use a plate carrier, you could loosen this up so it would fit better over a bulky plate carrier. So I don't think you would have to mess around with the height once you get it adjusted, unless you happen to still be growing. Uh, I'm not, so uh, I'm probably shrinking, if anything. So at this point, um, I'm going to go ahead and um, install the bladder and I'll come back and we'll take a look at the bladder installed and I'll see if I can figure out the, the optimum placement for the bladder. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't find any instructions on how to set this vest up. No instructions on how to adjust the shoulders. I had to figure that out on my own and, um, and no instructions on setting up the bladder. Uh, you would think there'd at least be something out there, you know, uh, 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 how to set up this vest for dummies page or, or something that Blackhawk would provide, but nothing. So um, you've just got to kind of grab it and run with it and kind of figure out uh, the best way to uh, get it set up. All right, after a bit of experimentation, um, it seems the best way to, to put a bladder in here is to install the bladder inside of this Velcroed area with your bladder cap 
and the, the tube um, elbow facing outwards. Otherwise, those items are going to dig into your back. Uh, I'm, uh, I've run into that problem before, so um, that's how I have it configured. This hole right here, I've got the drink tube running up and out of that hole through this material and through the D-loop and then it just kind of hangs here. So you don't get any other management capabilities for your tubing um, when it comes out here. So unlike um, some other vests or backpacks where you've got uh, uh, more strips um, of material you can run this under, um, there's nothing else here. So um, you know, I guess if you weren't using this pocket you could stuff that in there or something to kind of keep it out of the way. Um, this may not be the optimum way to set up the, the bladder, but uh, it, it appeared to be the best. Um, this little pocket right in here, um, there are these little hooks in here which look like it's designed to hold up a bladder. Um, but I did try it in there, of course with an empty bladder, and um, it uh, didn't seem to work out too well for me, but um, I guess that's, you know, maybe the, I, I don't have the right bladder, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this rather long uh, video of the um, Blackhawk Omega Elite Tactical Vest, second gen, I'm calling this the second gen, um, since it's not what I would consider the most current version.